Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to show you amazing photos that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by displaying these photos. But that's the whole point. These photos are proof that a small occult elite of a to make the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, before I start, don't forget to subscribe to my backup channel. Please check the link in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Niagara Falls is littered with Tartarian ruins. There's also a Niagara Starfort. The Niagara Starforts were used in the War of 1812, which is a sketchy story. It's interesting that most defenders of the Starforts lost their battles, apparently they weren't too easy to defend. The geometry of an apple encodes the pentagram and the torus. The torus, the geometry of magnetic fields, is responsible for the morphology topology in nature, and determines the shapes and dynamics of the natural world, thus, atoms, molecules, minerals, organisms, plants, flowers, fruits, vegetables, animals, and humans. The golden ratio, phi, and Fibonacci sequence, are governing the laws of physics and all shapes in reality, because we live in an electromagnetic universe, ruled by natural laws of proportions. The apple encodes both the torus, its cardioid and the pentagram, which encodes the golden ratio in itself. The Royal Pavilion in Brighton, UK. You can notice the lovely Tartarian architecture, with the antennas on top. This place was utilizing free energy from the ether. Notice the name Brighton, it's not because folks were pretty clever over there, but because it associates with the sun and light. The bright civilization. We are the beings of light. Official narrative tells us construction started in 1787. However, this style of architecture is much older by at least 1000 years. The Tunguska event was a tremendous about 12 megaton explosion that occurred near the Pitkamanaya Tunguska River in Yenisys Governorate, Russia, on the morning of June 30, 1908. I personally know a man for many years now who was quite high up in the KGB. I remember the first time I asked him about Tartaria years ago, he knew all about it. I also asked him if he knew anything about the Tunguska event, and he said Tesla's work was involved in the event. Tartaria History Channel. Kashmir Giants, posing with James Recalton, American photographer, 1903. One of the giants was 7 feet 9 inches, or 2.36 meters, while the shorter one was 7 feet 4 inches. Were these giant people close descendants of the late giants forgotten to our past? You decide. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Karshalton Denmark Road Sewer Pipe Constructed of cast iron and with details we don't understand, this column today actually serves as a sewer vent, commonly known as stinky poles. In Karshalton there are approximately 29 posts of this type. We found the same artifacts in windows and pagodas. Was it a coincidence, or were they all employed in the production of free atmospheric energy? Could this technological antiquity be some kind of air jet circuit breaker? Mm -hmm. 
Hans Steininger became famous for the longest beard in the world, 1.4 meters, which he was very proud of. In September 1567, a fire broke out in the city where Hans lived. Running from the fire, he tripped up over his beard and broke his neck. Over 450 years after Steininger's death, his beard survives, currently on display at the District Museum Hartzogsburg in Braunau. I do find it interesting how this is so well documented, and with such importance given to this story, and even holding on to his beard in a museum. Where in other areas of history, it can be very hard to find any information. Beale Castle and King's Tombs, Diyarbakir, Turkey. It is not known when and by whom it was built. According to modern and historical sources, the castle originally belonged to Salmanasar, the third king of Assyria. The castle was built of a single piece of big rock. Only the ruins of the walls, the foundations of some structures and the cisterns, have survived to the present day. There are also rock tombs belonging to Assyrian rulers on the river bank. Poor path with stairs, made by carving the rocks, descend from the castle to the Tigris River. In the west front part of Egil Castle, there is a figure of an Assyrian king with long cuneiform script carved on the rock face. The fact that the cuneiform script found in Eil Castle was together with a king figure, strengthens the view that the figure of the king and the cuneiform belonged to the Assyrians. The graves were looted at 502 AD by Shapur II, the king of Persian Sassanid. Anyway, this is a cost of living in 1938, when the dollar actually had a real value. Average price of a brand new car was $860. Sure, I'll take three of those. They're not after the money. They can print money out of thin air till hell freezes over. They are after your soul. In the end, that's what's really valuable. That's eternal. When faced with challenges, some of you are folding under even the slightest pressure. No matter what situation you are in, our ancestors have gone through and dealt with and survived much, much worse. You can handle anything. Be strong. The forces of light shall overcome the forces of darkness. Love to you all. Zach. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.